Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm going to be showing you around a new vector-based app. Vector Data Pro is actually a free Mac and iPad based vector app where you can do anything design wise, especially you can design logos and do vector illustrations really easily and it is completely free. So today I'm going to give you an introduction into Vector Data Pro and what it does, how you can use it and basically give you a quick start guide by showing you how I could design a very simplistic logo inside of Vector Data Pro. So when you first get Vectinator Pro, you'll be brought up with this welcome page here. Go ahead and press new document and I'm going to go for A4 just because that's what I normally go for. But you've got like paper here, paper sizes, resolution sizes, devices, icon sizes and social media sizes. So I'm going to go straight for A4. Now you'll be brought to this UI. This looks very similar to the one inside of the iPad that you use. You've got the layer section over here, which you can take away by this button here. You've got your toolbar over here. You've got your layer opacity down here. You've got a lot of different tools up here that are completely customizable by right clicking and customizing the toolbar, just like you would normally do in a Mac. And over here, you've got your style, you've got your templates, and you've got your settings. And you can get rid of that as well by just going like this and opening up your board. So when you first step in here, you might be wondering how you create shapes. Well, you've got your toolbar over here, just like you would find in other vector apps. You've got your square, and if you double click again, you've got your polygons, you've got your circles, you've got your stars, you've got your lines, and you've got your twisty ones here. Now with these, you can make them actually a bit more circular, these squares, by just using this intuitive panel over here and it'll create more of a circular square for you to use. You've got your brush here as well, and this is great for vector illustration as well, and you can edit this within all of this paths and style boards over here. Now, a lot of you guys will be asking about the pen tool. Can you use the pen tool? Is it great for vectorizing, let's say, a logo type? And yes, you can, the pen tool is there. Press P or go to the pen tool, and you'll see you've got a full pen tool set here where you can basically horizontally, vertically keep your pen tool aligned with the handles. You can also just use one of these. And then you've also got a node button here or a node tool where you can actually go to these anchor point nodes as they're called in Vectinator and really go ahead to town and move them and change them however you want. And I've just noticed as well, when you first start out, you might have a weird grid at the background here. Just go up to settings and make sure you turn grid off and then you turn white background on. I think the best way for me to explain the software to you and how you can use it is by showing you real life examples. So I'm gonna show you how I design a very simplistic logo, which is very good, because it's supposed to be simple, and you guys will learn. So this will be great for anyone that is just new to design. So I'm gonna do a logo for giving blood. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and make a circle. I'm gonna press O, because that's my circle tool. I'm gonna to hold shift, and I'm gonna create a perfect circle like so. I'm gonna press A, which will bring me to my selection tool so I can select this. Over here in the style board, as you can see, I've got a stroke value and I don't want that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that off by shutting that eye down. And then I'm gonna click the eye up here to the fill and I'm gonna turn it to a red, a really bright red. Now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. You press Z or Z, depending on what you like to say, and you can zoom in like this in and out by going up and down like so, or pressing command and then minus or plus. And like in any normal vector application, everything is done by nodes and things. So when I'm selected onto this circle, I wanna go ahead and make this into a drop of blood and I'm gonna do this really easily. I'm gonna press S, which will give me my, basically my direct selection tool or the node tool. I'm gonna to select this anchor point up here by going on and selecting it. I'm gonna move it up and I'm gonna hold shift so it stays upright. I'm gonna move it up ever so slightly like this. Then I'm gonna go ahead and double click on it which will basically make it into more like a drop. But as you can see, the sort of curves over here don't work very well. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna highlight this node over here. Holding shift, I'm gonna hold this anchor point up. Now, as you can see, as I'm pulling this handle, it's affecting both of them, which we don't want. So instead of that, I'm just going to undo that. I'm gonna hold shift and alt and move it up. So it only affects this handle. I'm just gonna move it up ever so slightly so it drops that curve off, it gives it a nice fall off. I'm gonna repeat the process for the other side. And to me, that looks 
pretty good. I like the look of that. That's a very simple logo. Now, what if I wanted to put it inside of a shape or something? So what I'm actually going to do is move this over here and I'm gonna go up to my rectangle tool over here and I'm gonna give it a bit circular edging. So we'll do this. Maybe that's a bit too much. We'll just bring it down. Maybe slightly too much. Maybe bring it down to 26. That's more like it. Now I want this to be the background of an app icon or a logo. I like to make my logo icons fit inside of app icons because it frames it very well. So what I want to do is create an outline with the blood here. So I'm going to highlight it with my selection tool and then I'm going to press this little button up here. Now this button swaps the fill to the stroke. So as you can see now I haven't got any fill but I have got a stroke. I want to change the color of the stroke to white. Then I also want to move this icon into my work but as you can see it looks like it's not showing anything and that's because we need to bring it to the front so we need to go ahead and basically bring this to the front by pressing this order button down here then i'm going to go ahead to the stroke width and i'm going to play around with this i'm going to play around the size as well i want to get it so it looks like a nice clean app icon now this looks good but the problem that i see with it already is that up here this stroke is very curved and I don't want that. So I'm gonna select this. Then I'm also gonna to go to the join tab over here. Now the cap that I want and the joining of the paths, I don't want it to be this one here, which is rounded. I want it to be pointy. Gives it a nice clean look. I'm gonna zoom out and see what it looks like. Well, that looks a bit too big for me. So I'm gonna zoom back in, scroll it down a bit and see what it looks like now. Now that looks a lot better to me. So I've got this now that I can use. I'm gonna go ahead and basically duplicate it by alt dragging. And what else I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and outline that stroke. Cause now if I try to zoom down, it's going to make that stroke the same size as this. So instead of that, I'm gonna highlight this. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna press outline. This will outline the stroke. So now it's no longer a stroke, but it's just a normal shape. Now that I've got this, I wanna get the white out of this icon here. Cause right now that's a white shape on top of a red shape. I wanna cut that white shape out. So I'm gonna highlight this and in my style section of a scroll down, you'll get to a place called path. And I wanna choose this one, which is basically minus front. And that will minus or subtract the shape at the top from the one at the bottom. So right now I've actually got just one shape here with that cut out. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this icon here, delete the background shape, and I'm gonna just fill or change the stroke of it, in fact, to red, we'll do that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up here. I'm gonna select this one. I always like to duplicate my work so I don't have to like, basically go back in time too much. I'm gonna highlight the blood drop, and again, I'm gonna go ahead and outline. I'm actually gonna go ahead and duplicate this one again as well. I'm gonna go ahead and switch the fill to the stroke. So we just have a different variant right there. Okay, now we've got different variants of the icon that we can use. I need some text and I'm gonna call it give blood because that's what it's all about. You might've been wondering what I was talking about during all this, but we're gonna create a logo for give blood. So I'm gonna go ahead and press T, which will be my text tool. Then I'm gonna just basically select an area, write give blood. Now the typeface that I'm using is called Poppins and it's the bold version. Now this looks great, but as I'm seeing it here, the board here, the outlines and the bounding boards are too large. So we need to go ahead and make sure that the fit bounds, the text size is ticked. When we do that, it'll just fit the bounds correctly to the text size. Now this is editable text, but what if we wanted to use it without editable text? Well, this is a huge thing for vector programs and what they can do. So what I'm gonna do is highlight this and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna say, create outlines from text. That is no longer editable text now, it's actually just shapes within Vectinator. I'm gonna go ahead and press Command G to group this. And I'm just gonna get rid of my guides and my layers over here, because we don't really need them. I'm gonna zoom in ever so slightly. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try out a couple of different ideas. So I'm gonna take this and have this just here. I kinda of like this idea, it works pretty well duplicate that to create another version of this. It's all about creating new versions and seeing what you can create. And then I'm gonna drag this one down here. This one looks okay. It doesn't look too bad. It kind of looks a bit strange, but what we could do is move it to the right 
or even to the start of the type. We're going to duplicate it again because we want to be able to have a few different options to choose from and then go ahead, bring this one down a bit. So we have a blood mark down here and then we can use our app icon up here. Scale that down. And then we've got a full brand there. We've got an icon and a typographic logo with the icon in it. So Vectinator reached out to me a few weeks ago and asked if I would do some tutorial videos because I do use the Vectinator app. I use it mostly on my iPad instead of my iMac, but because we've got both on the iMac and the iPad, it makes it a lot easier for anyone who's doing this sort of work, whether you're a graphic designer or if you're a website designer or a logo designer, whatever you design, you can use Vectinator for. If you'd like to try Vectinator out for yourself, click the links down below in the description. And if you did like this tutorial and you would like to see more tutorials inside of Vectinator, leave a comment down below and also remember to like and subscribe to the channel. It means a lot when you do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon, goodbye.